Uh, another one you mentioned in your book who was uh, a colleague of um, Wallace was William James, the founder of American psychology. Yeah, William James was a very interesting person because he was open to a whole variety of facts that would be looked upon quite negatively today. One case he investigated was what he regarded as a genuine case of spirit possession. Mm -hmm. You know, the case is called the Watsaka Wonder. Oh, yes, indeed. And Watsaka, little town in, I believe, Illinois. Illinois. And it also happens to be the name of the street I live on in Los <laughs> Angeles, <laughs> oh, which is serendipitous. I live on Watsaka Avenue, uh -huh. which is... <clears throat> Named after kind of, one of the most famous cases in the history of psychical yeah. research. <laughs> so that was an interesting case involving a young girl named Laurency Venom. Mm -hmm. She's a member of the Venom family. She lived a quite ordinary life until at a certain point in time, she went into trance states, what she called trance states. And in these trance states, she claimed to be encountering the spirits of mm -hmm. departed personalities. And one of the spirits she encountered was that of a girl named Mary Roth, mm -hmm. who had died previously in that same geographical locality. Right. So she reported that to her family members, to her parents, and they went and searched out this Roth family and they brought her family to the Venom house. Mm -hmm. Now, Lorancy had reported that in her encounter with the spirit of Mary Roth, this spirit being had told her, I would like to visit my parents, so mm -hmm. more or less I'd like to take possession of your body for a little while. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, Lorancy Venom began manifesting the personality of this girl, Mary Roth. Mm -hmm. And when the family approached, they were brought to her house. She looked and was able to identify immediately without ever having seen them before, her mother, other relatives. And she by the agreement of both family members, went to live with the Roth family and perfectly manifested the personality of their daughter, mm -hmm. manifested all kinds of detailed knowledge about the family affairs that would have only been known to Mary Roth. And this went on for some time, for some days, until at a certain point... As I recall, it was a few months. Actually, yeah, for some time. Mm -hmm. And then at a certain point, she went back into the trance states and the spirit departed and she resumed her normal personality, felt yeah. like a stranger mm -hmm. in the Roth house, was returned to her family where she lived out the rest of her life in a fairly normal way, as far as I can remember yeah. from the reports. Mm -hmm. But I, I did find it extremely interesting that William James included this case in his textbook, Principles of Psychology, as what he regarded as a genuine case of yeah. spirit possession. I think it was case. removed from a later edition. Probably. But, but it, you're, you're absolutely correct. Yeah. The case was uh, investigated by James' colleague, uh, Richard Hodgson, who traveled to Watsika, Illinois, and interviewed the uh, families some years later. Uh, it stands as uh, one of the most well-attested uh, and dramatic cases of possession. Uh, and, and not in the negative sense either, because uh, as I recall, Lorancy Venom uh, was ill at the time, and when Mary Roth came, she, she said, this will help heal her, uh, which apparently it did. 
And uh, but the the interesting point I think, Michael, is that in this case says a lot about your notion of human devolution. That humans from from within what we could call the spirit world, or I could call it hyperspace, or some other dimension of reality, not. Uh, conventionally what we think of as three-dimensional physical reality are able to influence events in this world. Yes, and that depends upon understanding the actual structure of what a human being is mm -hmm. ontologically. Yeah.